Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. This is part two of our exploration of standard level topic 2.2, energy and biomass in ecosystems. Let's get into it. In ecosystems, carbon compounds and the energy that they contain move from one organism to the next through food chains. Each stage in a food chain represents a different trophic level. When we study food chains, we typically don't include decomposers because they obtain carbon compounds from multiple different trophic levels rather than following a linear progression. However, decomposers play a really important role in energy transformations in food chains because they break down dead organic material and they make it available as nutrients in the soil for producers again. As energy moves through trophic levels, there are significant losses at each step. Not all available food is consumed by organisms at the next level. There's always some left over. Then, of the food that is consumed, not all of it is absorbed. Some passes through as waste, like excrement and urine. And then, of all of the stuff that's absorbed, not all of it becomes new biomass, because some of the energy is lost as heat during respiration. These energy losses explain why food chains typically only have three or four trophic levels. When we measure productivity in ecosystems, we're really looking at two key metrics. First is gross productivity, and second is net productivity. Gross productivity represents the total gain in biomass by an organism or a trophic level. The net productivity is what remains after we take away the losses due to cellular respiration. It's like having a gross salary that's everything that you earn, and the net salary is what you take home after your deductions for things like taxes and insurance. Food webs show us the complex feeding relationships in communities of living organisms. Unlike simple food chains, food webs reveal how species may feed at multiple trophic levels, and also how energy can flow through different pathways within an ecosystem. The arrows in food webs always indicate the direction of energy flow and biomass transfer between organisms. That means your arrows are always going to go from lower trophic levels to higher trophic levels. To study energy flow quantitatively, meaning we measure it with numbers, ecologists measure biomass at different trophic levels. This involves collecting and carefully drying samples to remove all of the water content leaving only the dry organic matter as biomass. This biomass data can then be used to construct ecological pyramids that represent the relative numbers of organisms in an ecosystem, the relative biomass at each trophic level, or the energy at each trophic level. Unfortunately, some substances that enter food webs can have harmful effects as they move between trophic levels. We have non-biodegradable pollutants like PCBs and DDT or mercury. These can bioaccumulate within an organism over time. That means that as that organism feeds repeatedly on the same type of food that is, has that pollutant in it, that organism, that individual organism, absorbs more and more of the pollutant. So the concentration or the total amount of pollutant in that organism builds up over time. Similar to bioaccumulation is something called biomagnification. But biomagnification means that toxins become more concentrated at higher trophic levels, as larger and larger predators consume many contaminated prey. This problem is made worse by microplastics because microplastics can absorb these pollutants, and that helps increase their transmission through food chains. Human activities significantly impact the flows of energy and matter in ecosystems. Burning fossil fuels releases stored carbon and pollutants that can affect primary productivity. Deforestation can remove huge amounts of biomass, and it can also disrupt photosynthesis. Urbanization replaces natural ecosystems with built infrastructure, and modern agriculture frequently creates simplified systems with only a few species, and that reduces biodiversity. All these changes alter the complex networks of energy flow that have evolved in natural ecosystems over many millions of years. When we understand these concepts, 
that helps us recognize how human actions affect ecosystem function and its stability. When we study energy flow and trophic relationships, then we can better manage our resources and work to maintain the ecological balance and processes that sustain life on our planet. That's it for topic 2.2. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, happy learning.